Thank you, Carolyn. Um, let me just hide this. Okay, can everyone hear me just fine? All right, let me know. All right, um, yes. so hi everyone. Thank you for joining me. Um, a bit about me, my name is Jenny Chen. I am the programming coordinator at the Clinton Community Library, which is a rural library located in Dutchess County. Um, aside from planning and coordinating programs, I am also responsible for creating our weekly newsletter, designing flyers, and creating graphics for social media. Um, many of my examples for this presentation will be based on the work I do at Clinton. Um, before I used Asana, I felt that I was constantly forgetting small tasks um, and I was not as prepared as I could be. I really wanted to plan further ahead, but I had um, a really difficult time managing the work I already had. Um, using a physical planner, Google Calendar, printing out program templates was really not cutting it. Um, and now that I've used Asana for about a year and a half, I found that it has really changed the way I work and how I feel about it in a very positive way. Um, I feel more prepared. I know exactly what to expect for my workload. Um, and I've also made more time for the work that I'm interested in doing. Um, and so I wanted to share this great tool with you all in case anyone else has a similar experience. Um, in this presentation, I'm going to briefly introduce Sana, go over why you should consider using it, its interface, um, key features, and some considerations for getting started, um, and then hopefully we'll have time for questions at the end. Um, so what is Asana? Um, Asana is not just a to-do list, though it can certainly be used that way. It is a web-based project management tool that allows you to organize your work for yourself or with teammates. Um, a project can be defined as an activity that has a start date and an end date that produces a deliverable or a service. Um, for example, planning of a summer reading program would be a project. Um, there are both free and paid versions. I use the free one, so I won't be able to comment on the paid premium features. Um, I find that the free version suits my needs just fine, um, though it only allows up to 15 users per team. Um, there are many similar applications to it. Um, Trello, Monday, um, Kanban Flow, and a few, are a few that come to mind. Um, Asana is certainly not the only one. Um, so why use Asana? Um, well, for one, it has the capacity to allow you to view your tests um, or projects in a list, board, or calendar formats. Um, it's really helpful for visualizing your work um, and getting really organized. Um, and because of that flexibility, you have greater control and organization over how you work. When you have a major project, you can break down your to-dos into sections to make it easier to manage. All of your work can be laid out in one place. Um, if you choose to work with um, a team, you can communicate directly with them using the messages function within the program. It might help get down on all of those emails that we get now. Um, you can create your own project templates, um, automate reminders for any type of recurring work. So it will definitely save you a lot of time. Um, and you can worry less about missing uh, deadlines. There's less minutia to keep track of in your own brain because you can tell Asana to remind you. Um, for example, I've been coordinating a lot of online programs this past year, as you all have probably, um, and I enter all of my program descriptions and meeting links directly in the project overview sections. That way I'm not digging through other places like my emails or calendars to find that information every time a staff member or a patron asks for it. Um, I also set up daily reminders a week out from program start dates. So I remember to email patrons the meeting links and to touch base with our presenters. Um, this level of control and structure has really helped reduce my anxiety and stress in the past year. Um, and to look at how Asana helps with all of what I just mentioned, let me introduce you to its interface. When you log on to Asana, this is the homepage that you'll see. On the top left are navigation tabs, projects on the very bottom left under the names of any members who have been added to your workspace. 
On the right are tasks that are due soon, and below that are projects added to favorites. Um, so this is the homepage. Now let's take a look at a project. Uh, this is a project overview. Um, you can enter any relevant details on this page in the red box. You can see I chose to enter the program information, which includes a description and um, a Zoom meeting link. Um, Asana immediately recognized the Zoom link as a hyperlink, which is very nice. Um, so you don't need to manually go and mess with that. Um, below are the project roles, which allow you to add team members to the project. Underneath that um, is the key resources section um, where you can add links and files. On the right is the project timeline where you can see the due date, um, if I had one there, um, and any messages that have been sent um, by your team. To the right of the project overview uh, option is the list view. Um, just as its name suggests, it allows you to see your tasks in a list. Um, this is the board view, but we won't really talk about it in this presentation. It is available in the free version if you have a use for it. Um, we will take a look at the calendar view in a bit. Um, and just as a reminder, um, on the left is a list of your projects. I happen to like naming mine with a date first so I can tell at a glance what's coming up next. Um, and back to the right at the very top is the project's title. Further below that are your section headers. They can be named, they can be named anything you like. I just find it helpful to organize my tasks in the time period they are due. Um, so I categorize the headers as within a month of the program two weeks a week um, and day of the program. Um, then below the section headers are your tasks. Subtasks can be nested below these, um, though they will not show automatically in a drop down. Um, I do not have subtasks here, but we'll see some later. Um, and then finally, from left to right, you have your tags, assignee, due date, and project sections. You can create and label your own tags. Uh, right now, I only use two. One is called uh, pending, which you see in the yellow. The other is priority, which is not listed. Um, assignee is the project assigned to the task or project. Um, if you've invited a team member on a project, you can assign tasks to them here and they will get a notification for it. Due date is just as it sounds when the task is due. Uh, the projects column is if the task is also assigned to another project, uh, aside from this one. Um, this is helpful for when you want to break up a massive project into smaller ones, but still keep track of it within one. Um, so before we were looking at the project view as a list, um, and now here's the calendar view of the project. Um, this is the view for one project only. It is not um, a traditional calendar. Um, the calendar view is really handy for looking at your to-dos relative to You can also easily change a due date here by dragging and dropping the task to a different date. Um, the color of the task correlates to any tags you've assigned to it. All right, so now that you're a bit familiar with the interface, let's go over how, uh, let's go over Asana's key features. Um, so one feature is the ability to make your own templates. Um, as I mentioned, I'm uh, a program coordinator. So what I have done um, is built, pre-built um, a project template called online program template. On the right, you are looking at a merged screenshot of the entire list of tasks in that template. Every program that I plan starts off this way. Um, I simply uh, duplicate this project um, and fill in all the information for the program as I go. Um, and you can imagine what a time saver this is um, to not have to write all of this out each time um, I plan something new. Um, and think about how this would look um, if it were a regular to-do list on a calendar, right? Not very feasible if I had to do this five times in a month. Um, so being able to make um, your own templates is quite helpful. Um, and here's my favorite feature, which is the My Tasks tab. Here we are viewing it as a list. Um, I am always in this tab because it shows me everything that is due in chronological order. Um, and this is very powerful because it allows you to focus on what needs to be done in the immediate future. 
Um, typically, if I have time after I've completed all of my work for the day, I can either look ahead to the week or I can make time for side projects that I have started um, but have not set a time, side time for. Um, it's nice to also gauge whether the amount of work I've assigned for myself is actually realistic. Um, and because of this, I've learned to reprioritize tasks and delegate them to someone else if I have the option. Tags are another um, great feature. You can assign tags to tasks and you can create any tag you like and color code them. Um, the way I like to use them is to assign a status to a task. Um, for example, something that's, um, that needs to be done immediately gets a priority tag. You see that in the red. Um, or if I'm waiting for someone's response, I use a pending tag, which is uh, what you see in the yellow. Um, the colors make them stand out. Um, as I mentioned, you can set up tasks to recur, to recur at specific intervals, um, such as daily, weekly, monthly, or even your own custom um, intervals. Um, you can also set a due time, which I find helpful for setting up reminders because it will sort the task to the very top of your list in chronological order. Um, if I need a hard reminder, um, I will still set an alarm on my phone. Um, so I did promise you subtasks, and this is what they look like on the left in the red box. Um, here we are looking at a project page, and I'm using subtasks to track payments from participating libraries uh, for a collaborative program. Normally, subtasks are only revealed when you click on the drop-down arrow uh, circled in the blue, unlike parent tasks, which are the ones one level above a subtask. On the right-hand side of the screenshot, you are looking at the detailed view of the task, which will also show you the subtasks. Um, as far as team collaboration, um, obviously you can invite other team members to join your workspace, workspace from the very beginning uh, through the invite teammates option. Um, and then you can also invite your teammate to join you specifically on a project through the share button at the very top. Um, you can also assign individual team members to subtasks. For example, here um, I've assigned a different staff member to check on payment um, from the library. Um, and to help you work together, Asana also allows you to attach images or PDFs. Um, you can add detailed information um, with text, lists, or links in the description section. Um, underneath that, you can also write comments or message your teammates um, about this task directly, um, and you can also tag them. Um, at the very bottom, you can add collaborator collaborators for this specific task. Um, finally, another way to message your team about the whole project instead of just a particular task is by hopping over to the messages tab. Um, Asana will alert everyone on the project of this message and will also show up on the project overview page, which we saw in the very beginning. All right, so with what I just showed you, I think you have a pretty good sense of how I use Asana. Your work might be really different from mine and therefore you might have different needs um, and that's fine because Asana is just a tool. Um, ultimately, you will have to decide whether it's useful for you and your team. Um, if I've piqued your interest and you plan on using this program, I would advise starting with just one project first. Um, if you feel pretty comfortable with it after that, um, I would then take the time to lay out all aspects of your work um, and think about how you would organize it. Um, it might seem like a tedious process at first, but it is really worth the effort. Um, also, try to be consistent um, in using it, um, like updating um, and adding tasks. Don't just set everything up and never look at it again for weeks because then it might not reflect the work that you are doing. Um, if you plan on working with a team, um, understand the possibility for pushback. Um, you or your manager will likely need to make the decision whether um, it's worth it. Um, this will probably depend on the team members level of comfort with technology and um, willingness to use it in their work. Um, recently, I gave um, an Asana training to our board of trustees um, who plan on using it to plan for our 414 vote. Um, and while most of them were on board, there was an individual who questioned 
whether it's really better than what they have used in the past. Um, and that's a fair question, right? You do need to devote time to learn this program. Um, like I said, Asana is just a tool. Uh, but to conclude that story, um, our board was attracted to Asana's potential and they have started using it to plan for our 414 vote um, and also create a book sale guide for next year. Um, so that concludes my presentations and I'll take questions now if there are any. And I don't know if you can see the chat yet. You do have one, one question um, from Debbie in there. Oh, yes, sorry, let me pop that out. Um, I am using the free version. Um, everything that I just showed you is part of the free version of Asana. Um, and let's see, from Mike. Um, <laughs> Mike says, like Microsoft Project, but nicer looking and easier to use. Um, I haven't used Microsoft Project, um, but I have used Wonderlist, and I know Microsoft has kind of taken it over that, and I didn't like it anymore. <laughs> so <laughs> that's my comment for that. Um, but yes, it's a really nice, um, simple, clean interface, um, which is pretty intuitive and a shallow learning curve, in my opinion. Um, how many people can be in your, on the teams for the free version? Um, for the free version, it's 15. Um, so I don't use, um, you know, I don't collaborate a lot, but I did notice that you can also have a different workspace, which might be a way to get around that. Um, so all my projects that you saw um, were private because imagine having 30 of those show oh. everyone else's. <laughs> You know, so um, I know you can hop onto like a different workspace. Sorry, I'm, this is Mike, by the way. <laughs> no, never mind. I like I like this. It's a very nice program. It's, it definitely looks it definitely looks easier to use and more. I like the colors and everything. It's very nice. Yeah. Um, let's see, uh, next question: Do all team members for the project need to be from within one organization, um, or does it allow you to add members from outside people? Uh, people with Yahoo or Gmail emails. Yeah, um, you can. Um, a team can be from what their email does not have to be from um, a designated domain. Um, so I think when we started, my director actually invited us using just regular Gmail accounts. You know, we had um, mine was clinton.programming at gmail.com. Um, now we've switched over, but, um, you know, you, you, so you can is uh, the answer to that question. All right, any other questions? No problem. All right. All right. Thanks, Jane. I'm going to, again, drop the link to the evaluations. And if anyone else is formulating another question in the meantime, you know, feel free to drop it in. Um, Jenny, really appreciated this because I've been a big fan of Asana for a while now, and I've been once I integrated everything into it, it's been sort of the first thing I do in the morning is check to see where I am. But uh, it's always helpful to see how other people use it because you are using some features that I haven't and I hadn't really known how to use before. So I think I'm, you've given me some ideas of, of ways that I can use it. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm actually, I'm I gave this presentation to my husband. He's like, oh, I should use this for my <laughs> project. It's so, it's just exciting for me. I know it's a bit strange, but um, yeah. I did learn a lot when I put this presentation together because I'm like, oh, I need to know <laughs> more, more what, than what I do. So yeah. it was really great. Um, I'm like this close to using it for my personal life. Uh, it's like it, yeah. would, it would work, but it just, sometimes you just need personal life to feel like personal life, but when there's a lot of moving pieces in anything, it can be very helpful. Yeah, um, I will say that I'm kind of glued, like it stays up permanently. I don't know if it's true for you, but email, Slack, and Asana are just permanent tabs on my screen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so for work, it definitely um, works perfectly. But for personal, I feel like I would just forget, you know, to use it. And I have, I have tried, I've considered it before too. 
Yeah. Yeah. I, it's sort of, the, there's places where the, the home life balance means not using the same tools. Yeah. Like <laughs> and for home, we actually just started printing out a calendar, like a physical calendar and putting it on the yeah. wall. And that actually, that seems to work better than. Yeah. Um, I do still um, use a, sorry, physical planner too, for my, per, my oh. personal life. <laughs> so I like it better. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Also good, good to know too, that, that your, your fancy blurred background blurs your yeah. personal planner. So it's actually probably good for, you know, you'd be like, this is my address book, but nobody can see any of the addresses. It's nice and blurred. Okay. <laughs> All right. So um, if there's no more questions, um, if anyone thinks of any, um, my contact is there. Um, and thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Round of applause for Jenny. Thank you.